Today we're going to be talking about a new adapter that we have. This is our M12 Xcode adapter. I've been told that the X in Xcode stands for 10 or 10 gig. We're seeing a transition in factory environments where rather than using bus technologies to communicate with different devices, I.O. devices, uh, HMI devices that are out on the factory floor, there is an interest to run Ethernet closer to the edge in our factory floor. That's great. Ethernet is a understood protocol. It allows us to choose some more generic uh, switches and routers. But the factory environment is still very difficult. And so if we look at this M12, this is again the X code, so it's four pairs capable of supporting 10 gigabits Ethernet. We have concerns beyond the standard signal to noise ratio that we usually look at with Ethernet with attenuation and next and return loss. We start to worry about mice. Mice, yes. <laughs> is there going to be mechanical stress on our cable? Is there the possibility of ingress, oil, or something? And the E in mice has to do with the the electronic environment. There are three levels, E1, E2, E3, representing a standard office would be an E1 environment, E2 would have more interference in an E3 environment, perhaps in an industrial environment where you may have arc welding machines or large motors, sources of electromagnetic interference. So I want to test this connector. It helps to have this M12 X-coded adapter to put it on, but now what test limit am I going to use for this? Well, from the building world, we're used to talking about the Telecommunications Industry Association, the TI-568 standard. But the TI-568 standard is for buildings, not industrial environments. TI does have a standard, the 1005 standard, is designed to be used in industrial environments. What I found is it's not as well known as possible, so let me explain it to you a little bit. When we go in here and choose to do a new test, we're going to default to our standard Category 6A unshielded cable and our standard Category 6A permanent link. The industrial people may be saying permanent link, not familiar with this term. Select the cable type, go down here and select more, go here and select generic, and I can select a Category 7 or a Category 7A SFTP suggests that there's both an individual and an overall shield on that cable. Now the shield test will determine pass or fail. We'll always look to see if there's continuity in the shield and to make sure that the shield follows the path of the cable. If the shield test is enabled, we'll check to make sure there's continuity. Now the test limit. I'm going to choose more down here in the bottom corner and well let's start with the TIA limits. And we'll take a look at category 6A. Here are our 568 limits with channel and permanent link. Our MPTL limits. Please see our video on MPTL, MPTL plus PoE. And then we start to get down into these 1005 limits. You'll see there's a permanent link and a channel test. Then we have the E1, E2, and E3. The E1, the E2, and the E3 are for those environments that have a mice rating of E1, E2, or E3. Let's select the basic E1 limit to start with and run a test here. I'll use, use selected and push test to start. Now what we're going to add to the test, the basic test, outside of, well, wire map and length, we measure how much signal is getting through, actually how much signal we lose, and we measure noise parameters. Noise parameters can be next from one pair to another pair, or return loss, which is a measure of reflected signal on the cable. Now by choosing E1, E2, or E3, we're going to add another parameter that is this TCL, transverse conversion loss. In simple terms, transverse conversion loss is a measurement of whether or not your cable is balanced. And by balanced, is each leg of the pair electrically similar? If each leg of the pair is going to treat the signal in the same way, then we are able to eliminate external interference. So the TCL test is something that will tell us the limits for the TCL test are 
in the 1005. And as we get to noisier and noisier environments, as we move from an E1 to an E2 or an E3 environment, an E3 environment that is more electronically noisy, we want to make sure that the cable has better balance. That means that it's more immune to external noise. Now, we are using a shielded cable, so the shielded cable should eliminate any of that external noise from getting in. And we'll find in the ISO world an open discussion about whether or not, well, it's not much of a discussion, <laughs> in the ISO world, if you have a shield, you're not required to run these TCL tests. All right, so we've seen in the 1005 test that we have some tests that include the TCL values and some that do not. As we get into a tougher environment, we may be interested in using the more stringent tests, the E2 or the E3 tests. Please check with your consultant. What does your contract say? What are you required to test?